So what I'm going to talk today is why do we have tolerance against autoimmune? Do we really have tolerance against autoimmune diseases? And what goes wrong in people who develop autoimmune diseases? So the whole concept of this autoimmunity actually came way back in the early 19th century. It was given by Paul Ehrlich, who realized that the immune system can sometimes go haywire. It can just change. And you can get antibodies against your self-antigen. While everybody used to think that, no, you cannot produce antibodies against your own self. So Paul Ehrlich was the first person who showed that you can get antibodies against your own self. But what he showed was that it was against the injured cells of our own body. So what is tolerance? In a literal English language, is it absence of response or is it modulation of response? What do you people think? Modulation, modulation. of response. Modulation. modulation. Modulation of response. It could be absence of response. Like I have so many people in the institute. I may, when I meet some of them, I don't like them. When I see them, I just do not respond at all. That is absence of response. You don't just don't acknowledge that person. The second is that I just say hello and I don't say anything else. So I have modulated my response. I am not going to sit and chit chat with them. So actually tolerance can be either of the two. And we'll see how immune system uses both these things. It tries not to have any response and it also tries to modulate its response. So this is what Somerset Mom said, that tolerance is only another name for indifference. And it cannot happen without the stimulus being there. You can't call it tolerance without the stimulus. So this is what is immune tolerance. So it basically describes a state of unresponsiveness of the immune system to substances or tissue that have the capacity to elicit an immune response. If, if it doesn't have a capacity, then it is not tolerance. Then it is incompetence. So tolerance to self-antigen occurs in T-cells. In T-cell, the tolerance occurs in the thymus because we know that thymus is an area where T-cells are developing. But it's an active process. It's not that it is passive. And it involves both the pathways. That is, one, you don't react. That is total absence. You have deletion of all the self-antigen reactive T-cells. The second, you modulate your immune response or you modulate your response. And that is generation of regulatory T cells to the self antigens. In B cells, because we know that the B cell develop in the bone marrow, this process happens in the B cells. In the B cells, again, the body tries to remove all the cells which are reactive against the self antigen. So there is deletion. The opposite. It does that it, how it modulates that it changes its receptor. We'll see how it happens. So these are the two mechanisms in B cell and the other ones are in the T cell. So what is a prerequisite for generation of tolerance? One, you need to know against which I am going to develop tolerance. So you have to have availability of antigen. You also need to have mechanism of cell death because then only you will be able to get rid of the cells which are reacting to my own antigens. And third, I need to have a functional mechanism by which I can make cells which can recognize my own antigen that will have a response which is not detrimental to me. So you have a functional mechanism to induce alternative development. So these are the three prerequisites for generation of any tolerance. Even in your own day-to-day, -day, you need to have that stimulus. You need to have that person whom you don't like. You need to make your own mechanism then either I just never interact with that person or I interact in a very different way. So what happens in the thymus? We said that all cells are initially generated in the bone marrow because that is where the hematopoiesis occurred. The prothymocytes, which are destined to become T cells, enter the thymus. In the thymus, they first undergo in the cortex. In the cortex, they are selected that at least that you have seen that the immune response generation needs a good T cell receptor 
and the T cell receptor needs to recognize my own MHC molecule. So the positive selection is, which happens in the cortex is that, that all the T cells which are being formed, they should be able to recognize that person's MHC molecule. That is what we call as positive selection. A T cell which can't recognize my own MHC is useless because it will not be able to recognize any antigen with the MHC. So those all get destroyed here. Then once the T cell can recognize my own MHC, it moves into the medulla. In the medulla, what happens is the T cells, the self antigens with very high type binding are all deleted so that we don't have self-reactive T cells going into the periphery. So it's, that is one of the major mechanism by which tolerance is induced. The other thing which happens is that you get generation of regulatory T cell, you see how. So this is, so normally you will have this generation happening here, the T cells is getting from Cortex, it is getting activated, it forms a, it is developed into a double positive cell, it becomes single positive because it also, as I showed you that the recognition of T cell with the MHC happens with either CD4 or CD8. So whatever T cells are developing, if they recognize the MHC class one better, that T cell keeps its CD8 molecule on its surface. It, shuts down its CD4. One which can recognize MHC class 2 better will keep its CD4 on its surface and the CD8 gets shut down. So from double positive cells, they become like single positive cells. So either they are CD4 or they are CD8. Then once they come to the medulla, the medulla has these epithelial cells. These are, these are the most important cells for tolerance, the medullary thymic epithelial cells. They will express self-antigen. So it was a very difficult thing to think that the thymus is so small and it has such a small medulla, how does it express all the self antigens which are present in my kidney, my brain, my liver, my islet cells? So people were not able to explain. Unless, till we found out that there is a gene which is called, now called autoregulator because it has such a profound function. It is a transcription factor which binds to the DNA and causes production of large variety of proteins, which are present in different organs. And those proteins are produced by this medullary thymic epithelial cell so that they can be presented to this T cell. And if it is binds with a very high affinity to these self antigens, these T cells will die and they will not come into the periphery. So if you, so that is what is shown that the IRE, this is the transcription factor which causes proteins of every kind being formed, which are present in the eye, stomach, everywhere. And these will be presented and the cells which see them with great affinity will die. So anybody can tell me what is the disease which happens when you have IRE mutation? APS. When you don't have APS1. 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 Absent. So they have what? What autoimmunity do they have? Uh, type one diabetes, hypoparathyroidism. Mm -hmm. We can go. Addison. The thyroid is hypoparathyroidism, Addison's disease, and chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. That is the classical thyroid of absent. So we will talk why they get chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis leak. So this is the kind people have done in vitro experiments to show that the medullary thymic epithelial cell can express antigens from all these organs. That is why we generally don't develop autoimmunity. Then once you have found that this cell now needs to die because it is recognizing myself antigen with a very high capacity. So the mechanism by which these self-reactive cells are deleted in the thymus are through fast, fast ligand pathway and activation of caspases as we saw and leading on to apoptosis. So it has been calculated that nearly 95% of thymocytes which develop in the bone, in the lymph thymus actually die. 
they are not good enough to come out in the periphery. Only 5% of thymocytes which are developing come into the periphery. The other thing which can happen is that when the, this is a thymic epithelial cell, it is expressing self-antigen. If it binds with intermediate affinity, then it gives a signal for this protein to be formed, the FOXP3 protein. And all of you know that T-regulatory cell is recognized by production of FOXP3 protein. It is the most crucial protein for the T cell to have a regulatory function. So you generate T-regulatory cells to the cell factor. So either the cell gets deleted or you get, so if you have a high strength of signal, then you get apoptosis. If you have a moderate strength of signal with the self antigen, you get FOXP3 produced. So either it will die or it will convert into a self antigen specific regulatory T cell. And these self antigen specific regulatory T cells come into the periphery. And these are what we call as regulatory T cells. In the B cell, Again, if it binds with very high affinity with the self antigen, so in the bone marrow, it's a stromal cell which expresses a self antigen. And these developing B cell interact with the stromal cell and if they find, then they die. Sometimes what happens is when they bind with the self antigen with a very low affinity, they can become functionally silenced that they will not react at all, but they don't die. The other thing which happens is that this is the antibody on this B cell, which has got a square kind of a thing. This is now binding to self antigen. So what the B cell does to save himself, it changes its immunoglobulin molecule and becomes a different immunoglobulin molecule. So the B cell has this capacity while the T cell does not have capacity to change the T cell receptor. So only this is only available with B cell. And that changes the molecule now that it does not react to the self antigen. So in the B cell, we have either the cell will die or the immunoglobulin molecule will change and it will now be not reactive. So we can leave that, this more complex. So is the system of tolerance in central organs perfect? No, nothing is perfect in anywhere. So still some amount of autoreactive T cells and B cells come into the periphery. All of us have a small proportion of autoreactive T cell and if we use very good methods, almost all of us will have some amount of antibodies will be there. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Okay, fine. I see. So, is, so the, what happens in the periphery? In the periphery, normally when you see a foreign antigen, we said the T cell will get activated. But when it binds to the self antigen, it does not get activated because the self antigen is being presented in context of non-inflammatory milieu. So the antigen presenting cell does not have co-stimulatory molecule. So the present the T cell which is generated is generally a T cell which is more of a regulatory T cell. So these are the things which happen. One, because of the blood-brain barrier, we don't have that this autoreactive T cell can never see the sight, like the brain, the testes, the eye. So like in eye, you get only autoimmune disease if you have injury, like sympathetic ophthalmitis. The inflammation happens in the other eye because you've already got those, the sensitized cells. Or in the... Ma'am, I have a doubt here. Can yes. I ask? Yes. Yes, and yesterday while discussing, we said that immunologically privileged sites like the eye and the brain are there so that the antigens don't reach it. So is that the only reason, ma'am, or is it also because uh, in case they reach and the inflammation, if it occurs there, can be very, very detrimental. So to minimize that, is that also a reason, ma'am? Because inflammation in the eye and brain grows space can be very... They are very crucial organs, but that way every organ is crucial. Okay, so that's not a very uh, strong that's reason. That's not a very valid reason, but uh, so but the anatomical barrier is available in three organs: testes, eye, and brain. The other thing which happens okay. is when there is recognition of self antigen, then you have expressed certain of the self antigen uh, re recognizing T cell expressed fast. And the antigen presenting cell also expresses fast ligand. So that fast, fast mediated lysis can happen even in the periphery. The third thing is that 
if you have inhibitory molecule like you get ctlf4 expression then again it can cause inhibitory signals and finally the most potent is the regulatory t cells which got generated in the thymus and which came to the periphery these are the regulatory t cell which dampen the immune response so these are the most potent cells which maintain tolerance in the periphery they don't let the affected t cell get proliferated or get activated and these regulatory t cells cause dampening of immune response by multiple mechanisms by producing inhibitory cytokines like il10 35 or by acting on the antigen presenting cell and causing production of these inhibitory chemicals ido which also has inhibitory effect on effector t cell or they cause deprivation because the t regulatory cell has a very high affinity il2 receptor so if there is a small amount of il2 the t regulatory cell will mop it up and the effector cell does not get the il2 and that will prevent proliferation of t effector cell and if you have proliferation of t regulatory cell then the t regulatory cell will stay around the antigen presenting cell and the effector cell will not have the chance to come here so that is a competition the t regulatory cells which are cd8 t regulatory cell can again produce granzyme and perforin and cause killing of the t effector cell so the t regulatory cell is actually a master regulator of tolerance in the peripheral so see we used to know the cd4 regulatory cell but now you have cd8 t regulatory cells also which are been recognized in the last 5 to 7 years they are mostly induced in presence of tgf beta they are not derived from the thymus and they majorly kill the uh, effector cell by cytolysis or by reducing the expression of co stimulatory molecule but they play a minor role the b cell how the peripheral tolerance b cell play a role because b cells are predominantly located in the lymph node so what has been shown that if you if the b cell meets interacts with the self antigen it only gets partly activated it does not get complete activation and it may not reach the follicle because follicle is where you get lot of b cell proliferation so that doesn't happen so now we know that we have the god has tried to make a very perfect system that we delete most of the cells the t and b cells in their primary organ that is b bone marrow and the thymus and we don't let those cells come to the periphery even if small amount is coming they are kept under check by the regulatory t cells but still we have autoimmune disease almost 7 to 8% of population has one or the other form of autoimmune disease how is this tolerance broken it is basically it can be because of genetic defects it could be because of environmental things or it could be immune dysregulation let's see examples of each of them so we have many different autoimmune diseases which are organ specific that means they stay the manifestation are predominantly limited to one organ not that they are totally limited to one organ but majority so you have hashimotos thyroiditis graves disease myasthenia autoimmune hemolytic anemia in other side you have non organ specific diseases which are which we call as systemic autoimmune diseases like lupus vasculitis rheumatoid arthritis so if you look at the genetic defects the genetic defect has to be profound for it to cause autoimmune disease by itself so we have discussed that if you have defect in the id gene you get disease called abscess because there is less expression of self antigen by the medullary thymic epithelial cells so we don't have negative selection the auto reactive t cells are not getting deleted the t regs are not getting generated while if you have deficiency of fox p3 there what will happen is that the t regs don't form and if the t regulatory cells don't form you have no peripheral regulation of tolerance and these children actually present within first one month of life and fox p3 is located on x chromosome so they it presents in boys with severe diarrhea type 1 diabetes so e stands for enteropathy i stands for iddm they also have they have polyendocrinopathy and they have immune dysfunction if defects in the pathway i told you that you need a machinery to kill those cells also so then the apoptosis of the self reactive t and b cells will not happen so these patients will present with 
So all these cells keep on accumulating. And these children have lots of lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, autoantibodies. So they look like lupus, but they have lots of proliferation of lymphocytes everywhere. Sometimes you can have defects in DNA repair, which can give rise to a cardiogutier syndrome, which is also a form of autoimmune disease. So we have left this. This is what I said, that you have chronic candidiasis, hypoparathyroidism, and autoimmune Addison's disease as a complex, but any kind of autoimmunity can occur in these children. They can have ITP, they can have IDDM, they can have ulcerative colitis, juvenile arthritis, and this is what we call a lipex, but predominantly they have these three features, type 1 diabetes, diarrhea, eczema, and multiple autoantibodies. Most would die without transplant within the first one year. And ALPS is basically massive lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly. And we said that the CTLA-4 is an inhibitory molecule. So if you have mutation in this inhibitory molecule, your regulatory cell is not able to work very nicely. So this also looks partly like IPEX, where there is a defect in the regulatory T cell. And these children also present with entropathy, low immunoglobulin levels, infections, and autoimmunity. But these are very, very rare syndromes. While autoimmunity, as I said, autoimmune diseases are seen in about 6 to 8 percent of population. So in them, it's actually polygenic. It's not that there is only one gene which is causing autoimmunity. And the most important molecule or the gene which plays a role in uh, autoimmunity is MHC. You saw that MHC is the heart of antigen presentation. So MHC molecules are very important. And we are all aware of autoimmune haplotype A1, B, A, D, R3. So those patients who have this haplotype, they have hyper-responsiveness to any antigen. And they also have high risk of having lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes, and others. But it's not only the HLA genes. There are many other genes which are involved with T cell activation, B cell activation, and many other immune pathways which have now been linked to multiple autoimmune diseases. But HLA is still contributes the major genetic component to autoimmunity. And what you see in this cartoon is that the same gene is implicated in multiple autoimmune diseases. So it basically shows that the genetic background makes you more susceptible to autoimmunity. Depending on what kind of genetic background you have, you may be susceptible to two or three autoimmune diseases or maybe multiple autoimmune diseases. And it is the environment which probably decides which one are you going to get? What phenotype are you going to get now? I don't know if it is visible. It is just showing you the genes which have been implicated and where do they work. So HLA is mainly at antigen presentation. STAT4 is mainly at T cell activation. The BAF and BLK is mainly at B cell activation. And then you have FC gamma receptor, which binds the immunoglobulin that activates the macrophages, the complement pathway genes, the integrins, the interferon responsive genes. So all these polymorphisms have been linked to autoimmune disease because all of them cause hyperactivation of the immune system. So what is that? Man, this is similar to the system biology approach, ma'am. This is similar to system biology. System biology is actually when you put a lot more things, but this is basically showing you that the component, because in if you have a very severe genetic defect, even one gene defect can give you autoimmunity, like I showed you those examples. But in general, autoimmune disease, they are probably poly. Each gene contributes very minor component. So looking at the environmental triggers, it can be that you have an infectious agent, the body tries to mount an immune response to the infectious agent. Because the self-antigen looks pretty similar to the microbial antigen, the body gets fooled. The antibody which is actually generated against the infectious agent starts reacting against your own, anti own antigen. So can somebody give an example of this molecular mimicry? Acute traumatic fever. Which one? Acute traumatic yes, fever? 
डाइव एंड डाइव एक्यूट रोमैटिक फीवर या एक्यूट रोमैटिक फीवर इज अ क्लासिकल एग्जांपल वेयर यू हैव स्ट्रेप्टोकोकल एंटीजन एंड द इम्यून रिस्पांस जनरेटेड अगेंस्ट स्ट्रेप्टोकोकल एंटीजन दीस एंटीबॉडीज क्रॉस रिएक्ट विद द मायोकार्डियम दे क्रॉस रिएक्ट विद द वैल्यूलर टिश्यूज and the cross reactive cd4 t cells can bind to the valvular tissue as well as the myocardium plus the generation of the pro inflammatory cytokines these all cause damage and lead on to this and we know that if you give good penicillin prophylaxis you can prevent disease or you can prevent recurrences so this is probably one of the best examples but many diseases have been linked to many microbes like rheumatoid arthritis to proteus Ankylosing spondylitis to Klebsiella, Guillain-Barré syndrome to your Campylobacter jejuni. There are many, many more. But rheumatic fever is a classical example where we have also proven by using antibiotic prophylaxis and preventing recurrences. The second thing is that whenever you have an infection, you have the self antigen. Self antigen is actually lying inside the cell, so the system never looks at. But when you have A infection, there is tissue damage, tissue injury, and this tissue injury can cause this antigen which was lying inside to come outside. Or you have apoptosis. Apoptosis can cause release of tissue antigens which are lying inside. Or what you saw yesterday, that netosis, the neutrophils were extruding out those proteins. That can expose intracellular proteins to the self reactive t cells and b cells can somebody give an example somebody else not akash anybody of this kind of a mechanism release of intracellular antigens anybody sarthak you have any idea is mpo intracellular yes mpo is one of them very good yes sir leo lupus yes double stranded dna comes out in netosis mitochondrial dna comes out in netosis that people have shown that can work in patients with granulomatous polyangiitis proteinase 3 or this is a very simple example of sympathetic ophthalmitis you had an injury to the eye trauma occurs to one eye the uvl antigens and i antigens travel to the lymph node they get activated and because there is lot of pro inflammatory milieu these cells will go there and will cause inflammation in both eyes so injury exposure of self antigens then this is bystander effect that you have an infectious agent has come it has caused activation of the immune response and because the immune response has got activated there is self antigen inside the tissue tissue damage has occurred now this released antigens are being taken up by antigen presenting cell because the antigen presenting cell has got activated and it presents this self antigens to the self reactive t cell the other way is that because of the pro inflammatory cytokine release the t cells are getting activated and the self reactive t cell was standing on the side that also got activated that can also cause injury so can you give example of this like what happens in a shootout in the bank robberies or something like they they are not interested in the people who have come to the bank they have come to rob the bank but when they shoot some bystander also gets shot so people have shown very nicely that infections can flare up diseases so like you see patient with lupus when they have infection their disease also flares up and whichever area you work you will see that the autoimmune diseases especially the systemic autoimmune diseases organ specific autoimmune diseases actually manifest only when there is a lot of damage while in systemic autoimmune diseases very clearly shown that infections can cause flare of disease this is another way by which infections can cause autoimmunity so you have an infectious agent normally we said that the antigen binds 
in the antigen binding groove of the MHC and cause activation of T cell. But sometimes some of these antigens or microbes have something called super antigens. These are antigens which can don't bind in the antigen binding groove. They bind outside and they recognize lots of T cells and they cause massive activation of T cells. When there is a massive activation of T cells, some of the self-reactive T cells also get activated and they cause damage. So can somebody tell us any super antigen? Toxic shock syndrome, staphylococcus. Toxic shock, toxic shock syndrome. So staphylococcus has certain super antigens. So these are like supermans. So normally when we have infection, normally one in million T cell will get activated. But when you have these organisms which have super antigens like mycoplasma, like staphylococcus, they can activate one in thousand to one in ten thousand T cells. So you have a massive reaction. So Kawasaki disease is thought to be mediated by super antigen activation of T cells. Then is that if you don't have removal of the antigen, like we saw, we said apoptosis can occur, you can have netosis, you can have cell death. Whenever cell death occurs, there is release of DNA. Whenever apoptosis occurs, there are nucleosomes being released. So they need to be digested. So like there is, there are DNA enzymes which are circulating, which kill up these, chop up this DNA. So now the DNA specific B cells cannot see the DNA. So you have keep on having maintenance of tolerance to your self DNA. But if you have defect in DNAs one or DNAs one L3, these are two enzymes which are needed for chopping up the DNA. If they are not chopped up, then you will have lots of these DNA circulating and that will activate the self reactive DNA specific B cells and lots of anti DNA antibody formation. And no lecture in autoimmunity can be complete without talking of gut microbiome because all of you in every specialty is reading that gut microbiome determines most of the diseases and especially so the autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, type 1 diabetes. So what happens in the gut is that if you have good bacteria and there is a hemostatic balance, you will have a low grade inflammation, very, very low grade. There are TH17 cells in the there, which will keep a low grade inflammation, which will not allow pathobionts to enter. And it will also cause release of antimicrobial compound to be secreted so that you can take care of these microbes. But if you have dysbiosis or you have short filamentous bacteria or lots of species of bacteroides, lactobacilli, they will cause the release of serum amyloid A protein, which is a cue for inflammation. These activate Th17 cells a large amount or Th1 cells. These will migrate to other sites and can cause, or at least can aggravate an autoimmune disease in a predisposed individual. Then we know we can also have drug-induced autoimmunity. Like procainamide can induce lupus. How does it do that? Normally, so procainamide, basically what it does is that if you treat with procainamide, you get a lot more of demethylation. And we know demethylated DNA is active DNA. So if the DNA is demethylated, you will have lot of active transcription, lot of protein forms. So procainamide activates the T cells. So the T cells and the B cells are much more activated because procainamide is leading on to B Can you just switch off your mic? Yes. So if you see autoimmunity is a multi-step process. You have genetic susceptibility, which can work at every place. You have various triggers, be it viruses, be it bacteria, UV light. How does UV light cause more autoimmunity? Is basically the UV light leads on to apoptosis of the keratinocyte and release of autoantigens. Drugs, I've given you an example of procainamide. Hormones, we know that a lot of autoimmune diseases are much more common in females. And because estrogens cause more activation of B cells, there are many, many more mechanisms. 
and all this so initially you have normal immunity then you get benign autoimmunity means you just have auto antibodies or small amount of auto reactive t cells but if these factors are persistent you get pathogenic autoimmunity you get igg auto antibodies you start getting tissue damage and when the tissue damage increases the patient comes to us with symptoms and if the symptoms persist the patient develops organ damage so basically what we have for prevention of autoimmunity is that we have mechanisms of central tolerance which is deletion of self reactive t and b cells and generation of regulatory t cells and in the periphery it is predominantly by regulatory t cells but little bit by other mechanism so thus to conclude immune response is highly regulated and it is interaction of genes related to immune pathways and environment which finally gives rise to autoimmunity so if you have any questions i will take it